good morning. It's July 21st, 9.45 in the morning. I just left Vancouver two hours ago, and I'm on my way to Jasper, Alberta to do the Icefields Parkway. The Icefields Parkway is a scenic highway in the Canadian Rockies that runs through the provinces of Alberta and British Columbia. It's renowned for its stunning mountain scenery, glaciers, waterfalls, and pristine wilderness. The highway stretches for about 232 kilometers or 144 miles and connects Jasper National Park to Banff National Park. You're very likely to see bighorn sheep, caribou, moose, black bears, and even grizzly bears. Though since I'll be doing this by bicycle and minimalist camping along the way, I'm perfectly happy to go without any grizzly sightings. Nearly any reputable online list or coffee table book you'll find of the greatest drives in the world will have this one at or near the top, which was good enough for me to give it a go on my bike. So let's spend a sec talking about logistics for this whole ride. So I'm going to be starting my trip in Jasper, in the town of Jasper, which is in the National Park of Jasper, and I'll be doing the Icefields Parkway from north to south. Apparently that's the most popular way of doing it because the winds tend to go north to south, so if you don't want to be riding in the wind for several days, that's the smart way to go. So I'm going to be spending the first night in a campground. The whole way I'm going to be camping in National Park sites. Bring in my own tent, bring in my own cooking supplies. It's rustic camping. Uh, so I'm not expecting hot showers, I'm not expecting drinking water. Just a basic place to set up your tent and maybe a bathroom if you're lucky. For as spectacular and beautiful as the parkway was, the drive from the coast had some picturesque waterfalls and mountain scenery not to be missed as well. Especially through Robson Provincial Park named after the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies. Just checked into Whistler's campground in Jasper and set up the tent. Now I'm just taking the bike for a spin to make sure everything's good. Seems to be. Well, that was fun. I just had to pay my park entrance fee again because uh, I did what I thought I was supposed to do, which was leave my five day pass taped to my windshield of my car when I left it. Then there's another park gate to get through. So then she says, where's your pass? And I said, it's taped to the windshield of my car, like you said. And she said, no. Anyway, back on the road. I'm only 45 minutes into my ride and I have been climbing for the last 20 minutes or so because I'm doing the 93A variant which is the old highway that runs parallel to the 93 or so I thought it actually heads straight to the base of the ski hill so it's climb 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 and then eventually it turns and dives back down and rejoins the other highway but in the meantime I'm hurting Beautiful morning though, and no bears. After an early climb, the 93A heads back downhill and follows the river south along the west bank. It was an absolute delight. Because it's a secondary road that it, it seems like few people knew about, I had the road totally to myself, often riding right down the middle.
Goats and Glaciers Lookout Point. I want half my money back. I don't see any goats. I'm supposed to gather on this slope here. Not today they don't. It's starting to get warm. And I'm starting to see and smell a little bit of smoke. So I hope this isn't the sign of things to come. But this is okay, if it doesn't get worse, it's fine. These babies are so good and so sugary, which is just what I need. I cannot think of a better place to have jujubes. I just came up this hill and it was a mother. And it's getting hot. But only one more kilometer to Honeymoon Lake. And that's where I'll have lunch. This is Honeymoon Lake. Okay, we started at Jasper, no, we started at Whistler's Campground. 54 minus 77. All right, 23 kilometers to go. I have such a fun fact to share about the uh, Columbia Ice Fields, which is uh, really, it's this massive area with glaciers that fall down in every direction. So here's the fun fact. Water from the Columbia Ice Field flows into three separate oceans, depending on which glacier it comes down. Isn't that cool? Up the west, it, becomes the Columbia River. Columbia River drains into the Pacific between Oregon and Washington. Out the east, it becomes the North Saskatchewan River, and that goes into Hudson Bay, and that goes into the Atlantic. And then on the north, it's the Athabasca River, 
which becomes the Stave River, which becomes the Mackenzie River, which flows straight north into the Arctic Ocean. Cool, huh? After the Columbia ice fields, the road starts a long, steady descent, and we leave behind Jasper to enter Banff. Looking good. You pass the very popular Parker Ridge hiking area and the dramatic viewpoint at Big Bend, which really shows off how steep-sided narrow the valley is. The river goes along, and then it just disappears. So at this point, I've gone about 115 kilometers since leaving Jasper, and I've gained about 600 meters in elevation, which doesn't seem like a lot, but in the hot heat and carrying an extra 30 pounds on your bike, it starts to add up. So I was really happy to find some flat, easy going pavement. This is a road that keeps on giving. So I'm at Rampart Creek Campground. And uh, this is where I plan to spend the night tonight, but it's only 1.30. And I think I've got another couple hours in me. So we're gonna push on to Waterfowl Lakes, which is another 31 kilometers. So instead of sleeping here, I just grabbed some lunch, had a Coke, filled up my water bottles, and uh, we'll take on this last 31 kilometers. That's not a good sign. That was yesterday. I love this place. It hasn't been updated since what? 70s? Early 80s? I love the naughty pine on the walls and the old school booths. It's good when some things don't change, right? That's a good thing. We're at Saskatchewan River Crossing. You can head from here into the prairies if you want. But then why would you? It's busy out here. Okay, I'm at Mistea Canyon. At the top of a pretty good hill. I had to stop because my legs were shaking so bad and my hands were starting to tremble, which is a pretty good sign you need to drink some water and take a break. It's very hot today. It was 32 in the valley down at the Saskatchewan River. And then coming up here, the wind was hard in my face. <sighs> oh yeah. This is a good day. There's only three left in the whole place. This'll do. Yes.
7.15 a.m. and just setting off. I have to get over Bow Pass. It's the first challenge of the morning. But the good news is that's really the only climb today. The rest kind of, if I can believe the map, looks like a long, mostly flat or downhill descent towards Lake Louise. What a lot of nice people I met last night at that campground. Mostly because I love their dogs. Anyway, it's through the dogs that you meet the people. <laughs> but I'll miss the dogs more than the people. When you're headed south on the parkway, Bow Lake is the last real highlight until the end. From that point, you've got about 35 kilometers of beautiful but kind of uneventful road until you get to the charming little resort town of Lake Louise. It's got a couple of dozen stores, bakery, grocery store, sporting goods, liquor store. Most of the time people just stop here to stock up on their way somewhere else. And typically you're going to go up to Lake Louise itself and the beautiful Fairmont Hotel that's on the edge of it. And this would be the end of my Icefields Parkway ride. 235 kilometers, not quite three full days, and what a blast. All right, I'm at Lake Louise Campground in, you guessed it, Lake Louise. And uh, just like the other campsites, it's pretty basic. Picnic table and a fire pit if you want, but I haven't been using the fire pits because I don't want to smell like smoke. I'll tell you what my favorite feature of this campsite is now. This brand new chair that I just bought right here. This guy. This is a game changer. Why? You don't realize how important it is to sit with a backrest at the end of a long day. I went four days just sort of slouched at a picnic table or leaning against a tree trying to get some backrest. Finally, I just, when I got to Lake Louise, I'm like, that's it. I'm splurging. If you call 60 bucks a splurge.